Hello and welcome to Box, where we review, unbox and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have our hands on the LG A1 OLED 4K TV in 55 inches. Released this year as a part of the new OLED range LG announced in early 2021, the A1 is a relatively low-cost, high-quality entry-level TV to go alongside the B1 model. For what could be a first for LG, this TV finally allows you to get an OLED at an affordable price. Taking it out of the box, it's quite easy to remove the outer packaging by yourself and all the accessories sit just inside the top opening. Alongside the TV, you'll find a handful of accessories such as your standard instruction manuals, a panel to cover the back mount and a magic remote. The 2021 LG Gallery range are all designed to look great mounted on a wall using the VESA mount, but the A1 and B1 do both come with stands to give the option of placing the TV on a unit. As opposed to the single centre stand on the B1 model, the A1 stand comes with two separate legs that support the TV on the far edges. With the six screws provided, lay the TV face down on a covered surface to secure the legs onto the corresponding A and B points. Of course, this stand is not as luxurious as the B1 stand, but it doesn't take anything away from the overall look of the TV and does leave some space open for a sound bar. Before you place the TV on the stand, just make sure that you clip the cover over the optional stand mount on the back for that clean finish. The power cord is unfortunately already attached to the back of the TV, so there's no possibility of replacing it with a longer cord if you need it, but it's not too bad in length as it measures at about 142 centimeters. So it's fine when it's on a stand, but if you're considering wall mounting, you'll just have to make sure that you keep it close to an outlet. Moving around the back, it's pretty clean with an array of ports on the right side and minimal vents. Though the screen is ridiculously thin, it does hold a sizeable box on the back for all of the ports and vents, making it not as streamlined as some of the thin models on the market. For stand mounting though, it's not really an issue as it gives a bit of stability and still looks brilliant from the front. In terms of ports, we have a LAN, aerial connection, optical digital audio, and 3.5mm headphone port. We have two USB ports, three 2.0 HDMI ports, and one common interface. I do like how the HDMI and USB ports are positioned along the side for easy access when it's against the wall, though you would have thought when plugging it into the side it can lead to messy wires, so it's best to utilise the cable tidy provided to keep in line with the minimal design. The setup stage can be quite a lengthy process with modern TVs, especially when connecting all of your devices and logging into accounts. But out of the gate, you get to set up the Magic Remote. Now this is a pretty innovative piece of tech, allowing you to use the remote as a pointer to navigate screens as easily as opposed to pressing a series of buttons. From here, you can choose to activate some of the AI functions that adapt the picture and sound for greater clarity, as demonstrated here. Of course, you will need to program your TV to any sources such as satellite and cable to access the live television signals, but this section can be skipped if you feel like you want to do this later. After logging into your LG account, the welcome screen brings you to the home dashboard for going through your simple input navigation and keeping track of all of your connected devices. I did find that the inclusion of the Magic Remote is really helpful when it comes to navigating quick menus. It also has built-in buttons for the most popular streaming services such as Netflix and Disney+, which lets me move directly to the app with just a press of a button. The menu system is quite easy to move around, listing all of the apps and settings before moving down into displaying the most recent shows from each popular streaming service in this great visual tile system. So taking a look at display quality, we have a 4K OLED screen with a 3840 by 2160 resolution and full HDR capabilities. It takes that next level crystal clear picture using LG's signature self-lit pixels compared to the usual LED backlit tech. And because of the OLED technology, you also benefit from that fantastic ultra thin display. Even though it's an entry level TV, the A1 is one step ahead of the competition by offering that fourth gen AI Alpha 7 processor that analyzes the type of content you watch before optimizing the settings for the best picture quality. We have the 55 inch model, but the A1 is one of the few TVs in the 2021 range that comes in the smaller 48 inch size. I feel the smaller size is perfect for a compact home with narrow rooms or even as use as a potential PC monitor. Though it's not as impressive as the gallery style G1, it's great to see the art gallery feature on this TV that gives the A1 a little bit of class. Choosing from a range of interchangeable art selections, you can pass off your TV as a piece of art when it's not in use. It's a refreshing change from the static black box that usually takes up space on the wall, and though the effect isn't quite the same on the stand, it gives a great talking point when having friends over, or just a great feature that helps the TV blend into your home aesthetic. Taking a look now at the overall performance of the display, I tried out a variety of content to see how well it presented in terms of contrast, colour, brightness and viewing angle. 
the A1 boasts inclusion of AI upscaling, auto genre selection and brightness control. The main AI features make it easier than ever to just flick between different shows and not have to worry about adjusting the settings each time. But if you do find yourself switching up a movie for the football, the quick access menu allows you to toggle through the picture settings and sound settings in one or two clicks so you don't miss any of the action. One of the benefits of having an OLED is the self-lit pixels, giving out individual points of colour matching and perfect contrast points, all mixed in with that adaptive smart technology for a superior picture. So playing the latest TV shows in an evenly lit bright room, it worked perfectly well. The picture was incredibly sharp and truly loved up to the OLED name with those deep blacks. I felt the vibrant colours even stood out in a bright room and I could comfortably see what was happening even in those slightly gloomier scenes of a show. Looking at the screen from a sharper angle, I could see the whole image with no distortion. I did get a little glare from natural light, but it was nice to know that if I sat at an angle, I could still see a clear, complete picture. On the other hand, when watching darker scenes, I found that it was a little hard to see what was happening in the shadows when watching during the day. The common issue found with most OLED TVs is the brightness levels. Where it benefits from deep blacks and contrasts, it can struggle to put out a true bright picture compared to some of the backlit TVs on the market. So I set the brightness levels at 50 for the majority of the shows that I watched. But when I brought the brightness up to its peak in the darker shows, I could make out what was happening, but the blacks were bleached out, taking away that crisp image that OLEDs are famous for. Though I did find that watching the same show in a dark room made a lot of difference, bringing back that much needed clarity to the image that the show intended me to see thanks to the AI brightness feature. I did play around with a lot of the settings on this TV and from what I could see it has a lot of specialised modes that really help you personalise the display to whatever I was watching. It also has some nice features for improved eye comfort such as picture modes to adjust to fast moving images for minimal motion blur and adapt to the colour settings on movies and sport. When it comes to changing the settings in apps, I found the neat sidebar that appears on the left side of the screen really handy when wanting to change settings quickly. Its convenient toggle switches make changing display and sound settings an easy process. Of course, when testing sound settings for this TV, I found the various intelligent features that I'd applied worked relatively well, as I didn't need to touch the volume controls much when flicking between different types of content. We have Dolby Atmos to thank for optimising content and delivering brilliant inbuilt surround sound for even distribution no matter where you sit around the screen giving off major cinematic vibes. Of course, I'm not surprised that this TV does all of the hard work with little input from me. It puts the next-gen AI processor to work with automatic adjustments that adapt to my preferences in real time. Finally, we tried the Xbox Series X out to see how it copes with next-gen gaming. I found the picture quality looks sharp, and it was no surprise that the colour and contrast remain balanced throughout. The A1 does come with a game optimizer feature that toggles all of the game-related features on and off to suit your needs. Though it's hard to see at a glance, it does give that slight improvements to game response and syncing over long periods of time, working more than your average TV to make gameplay just that little bit smoother. The A1 unfortunately doesn't come with some of the much-needed gaming features such as FreeSync and 2.1 HDMI, but even though it doesn't support some of the most sought-after gaming features for the latest consoles, this console still ran pretty well and it's good to see the extra effort put into this TV to help improve every way that you want to use it. So after trying the A1 out for a few hours, it's clear to see that this TV is a solid option out of all of the high-end affordable TVs on offer. It may be low in cost, but it doesn't cut back on quality, making smart improvements to everything I watch without having to change multiple settings. The menus are easy to navigate and it didn't take long to personalise it to my favourite apps and devices. Movies and TV shows look brilliant in various light conditions and with the intelligent features in place it was easy to settle down into the action without feeling the need to alter anything. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the LG A1 from the 2021 OLED range. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe to Box where we have plenty of hands-on reviews of the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.